very warm welcome to my channel. In today's video, we are going to understand what exactly is ARP spoofing and ARP poisoning. So to start with, let me give you a brief definition of what exactly is ARP spoofing. ARP spoofing is a type of an attack in which a malicious user sends some crafted or falsified ARP messages over a local area network. So to start with, I would like to reiterate what exactly is ARP. ARP stands for Address Resolution Protocol. As you all know, in a network, uh, the, there are two kinds of addresses. The logical address, which is the IP address, and the physical address, which is the MAC address. Generally, most of the communication happens over the uh, logical addresses. But at the back end, the physical address is the one which is ideally being used for communication over the network. Especially, especially if we are talking about a local area network. So what happens if I want to communicate, if I want to communicate with any particular party present inside a network, I would need the MAC address of that intended party. So to obtain the MAC address, I would be using a protocol which is called as ARP or address resolution protocol, which in simple layman's term translates an IP address into a MAC address. That is when I want to communicate, for example, there are uh, Let's consider this ideal scenario, except that attacker, let's consider we are having only two users, Alice and Bob, over there. Charlie is one more user who later on turns out to be an attacker. So ideally, there are three users, Alice, Bob and Charlie. Alice wants to communicate with Bob. So the first thing she needs to do is she needs to craft a packet, send that packet to everyone present on that network with the IP address of Bob. Because the IP address is known to everyone because you are present inside a network. So you are knowing the IP address of each and every computer connected to that network. So the very first thing Alice does is Alice creates the message and Alice broadcasts that message to the entire network with the IP address of Bob. Sure. So what exactly happens is this message is uh, received by every other uh, computer connected to that network but whose IP address matches with the IP address which is being sent by Alice only that machine replies back with the MAC address so what exactly happens is the message is broadcasted by Alice to all the machines present on the network but only Bob will reply to it because Bob's IP address matches with the IP address that Alice has sent using her message so clearly this is what we call ARP or address resolution protocol but what happens in ARP spoofing is let's have a look over here in ARP spoofing what actually the attacker does is the attacker keeps on flooding the entire network with falsely or falsely crafted ARP messages what exactly I mean with this a false ARP message is nothing but the attacker for example in our case Charlie the attacker Charlie may behave as Alice and communicate with Bob. How? As we all know, if you're talking about a network, each and every computer has access to the router or the switch in this case directly. So what happens is each and every computer will update its ARP table. As a result, the switch or the router will be having an entire list of ARPs that is IP and the corresponding MAC MAC values associated with that IP. So let me show you how exactly this can be uh, found out. Uh, over here, I have already done it. There's a command which is ARP space minus A. Once you enter it, you get an entire list of IP to MAC configurations for the various interfaces on that network. Clear? So I, uh, for example, over here, I can see that there is an IP called 192.168.192.255, which is generally the broadcast IP and its physical MAC address mentioned over here. Similarly, if we talk about our scenario, the central switch or the gateway will be having a MAC table and basically an ARP table, which will be having the IP addresses and the corresponding MAC address. So what exactly happens in the ARP spoofing scenario is that Charlie, the attacker, anyhow floods the entire network with falsely crafted ARP packets. For example, if uh, the attacker Charlie wants to come in between the communication 
of Alice and Bob, what he or she will do is, for example, Alice wants to communicate with Bob. So there is no direct communication because we can see that the communication is going through the switch. So ideally what happens, Alice will send some message to the switch. The switch will then forward the message to Bob. And then the reply again comes in the exact reverse fashion with the help of the switch in between. At this very point of time, the attacker Charlie skillfully creates an ARP packet. The ARP packet is designed in such a way that it seems to originate from the switch with the source IP address equal to that of 192.168.0.40 which is exactly same as that of the switch. Let's have a look at the ARP header format. The ARP message actually consists of four important values which are the sender's hardware address, the sender's IP address along with the target's hardware address and the target's IP address. In this case, what happens is, as we all know, the attacker Charlie crafts an ARP message with the sender's IP address being the address of the switch and not his own personal IP address. So doing this will uh, create a feeling among all the computers in the network that maybe the switch has gone down and it has switched to a new uh, MAC address. So based upon this theory, what happens, all the other computers in the network will quickly add corresponding MAC address entry which is uh, which is originally belonging to Charlie's MAC address into their respective ARP tables. This will create a confusion. We will be having two IP addresses which are ideally same but they will be having two different MAC addresses. So as a result what will happen all the messages which were ideally intended to go through the switch will now be going through Charlie the attacker. Because what will happen this time is, along with the switch, even Charlie will be able to monitor the messages which are being sent by Alice to Bob. Why so? Because the message is going through the IP address 192.168.0.40. But the MAC address is now belonging to Charlie. So as a result, what will happen? All the messages which are being sent through the switch will be directed to Charlie and as a result man in the middle attack will take place. So what exactly Charlie does is whenever the communication uh, commences or whenever the communication begins between Alice and Bob that goes to the switch. This time Charlie will come in between read the messages which are being sent by Alice and then forwards the messages to Bob. This is all about passive monitoring or basically sniffing but what happens if Charlie the attacker changes the contents by coming actively in between and then forwarding the messages to Bob. This gives rise to one more topic which is called as session hijacking. In this case what happens Charlie comes in between the network communication between Alice and Bob and actively changes the contents of the message packets and hijacks the session over. This is what we call as session hijacking that we will do in the successive videos but for now this is what we call as ARP spoofing and the entire scenario is I guess self-sufficient or self-explanatory to explain the entire scenario of ARP spoofing. I have also prepared a, a practical hands-on session of how to carry out ARP spoofing in Kali Linux. So stay tuned for the next update, next video and then we will see how to carry out the entire scenario we have mentioned just now practically. Thanks a lot for watching the video. Stay tuned for my next updates. Thank you.